Swallows and Amazons by Arthur Ransom. Adapted for radio by David Wood. Episode 1. Summer 1929. Won't be long now, Roger. It's an endless trek through the Sahara Desert. See the camels plod bravely through the sand. Titty, they're she in a field. <laughs> <laughs> At least camels don't need water. When I was a child, we had thousands of sheep that died during the drought. In Australia? Yes. Those sheep must be glad they're English. Do they have sheep in China? Uh, yes, I think so. Well, even if Daddy has to miss this holiday, he'll see Chinese sheep when he gets to Hong Kong. Where will he be now, Mother? Well, his boat's in Malta, waiting for orders to sail. I bet he'd rather be with us. Of course he would. He loves the Lake District. He'd be showing you everything. He'd be saying, just look out of the window at that scenery. Yes, come on. It's getting late, John. You better unpack. Oh, please, Mother. It's still light. Oh, all right, but I'll see to the baby first. Yay! But it'll be supper soon. Susan, everyone back in ten minutes. We won't be long, promise. Come on! It's like the Pacific Ocean, and we're explorers standing on the peak of Darien. What's that? Over there! It looks like... It is! It's an island! Hard to believe it was 70 years ago. I remember so clearly standing there on the peak of Darien, I named it, staring open-mouthed at Wildcat Island. That was what the Amazons called it. But, of course, we swallows hadn't met them yet. We were still the five Walker children. Uh, well, four, really, if Vicky was still a baby. On the first day of our holiday, and what a holiday! The freedom, the adventures. Sad how the world has changed. Children today simply can't imagine. Their parents can't take their eyes off them for a second. But then, we lived in a world of innocence, I suppose. Supper's ready. Come on, Titty. Supper. Coming. Titty. Everyone called me Titty. My real name is Mavis. I fancy today to call someone Titty might be thought rather odd. Rude, even. But to us, there was nothing rude about it. It was my nickname. I rather liked it. Let's go in. Not too fast, Roger. It's a bit dark. There might be giant rats waiting to pounce. Really? No, not really. Shut up, Titty. I wouldn't mind if there were. Look. What? It's a sailing boat. She's perfect. There's a name on the back. Get out of the light, Roger. Swallow. She's called Swallow. We could sail in her. To the island. <laughs> I'm not sure. Please, Mother, it's not far. Please. John and I can sell pretty well. Oh, yes, but Titty and Roger have only had a couple of lessons. We can teach them. Yes, then we can set sail for the island and pretend we're shipwrecked. Shipwrecked? I hope not. <laughs> well, just for a week or so, till rescue comes. You want to camp on the island? Yes, why not? Please. 
I think we'd better ask your father. Oh. In those days, telephone communications were primitive, to say the least. There were none of these modern inventions like faxes or email or whatever it's called. Mother said it meant a letter to Malta. Dear father, we arrived safely. Mother says I am to ask your permission to build a camp on the island on the lake. Please answer soon. Happy voyage to Hong Kong. With love, Susan. And John. Dear Daddy, if we wreck ourselves on a coral reef, we will go down bravely. Not that we will. Love, Titty. Please, Daddy, may I go too? Love, Roger. Once the letter was posted, there was nothing to do but wait. By day, we practice putting up tents and sailing with Mother on the edge of the lake. By night, we slept in the farmhouse, dreaming and hoping and waiting for Father's reply. A whole week went by. Roger? Telegram? Is it the answer? Does it say yes? I think so. Does that mean me too? Yes, if John and Susan will take you and if you do as you're told. Yes! <laughs> well, do you want to take it to the others? Read it out. Better drown than duffers. If not duffers, won't drown. Hooray for father! What does it mean? It means the father thinks we won't drown. But if we do, good riddance. But what are duffers if not duffers? It doesn't say that. It says that if we're duffers, we might as well be drowned. Then it stops and starts again. And says that as we aren't duffers... If... If we aren't duffers, we shan't be drowned. Why doesn't he just say yes? Looking back, Mother must have been more than a little nervous at the thought of us sailing on our own, though she never showed it. But she did come down to the boathouse to make sure we could handle Swallow. John, you and Susan bring her outside and step the mast. Now, you won't be able to get her out if you step the mast while she's in the boathouse. That beam is too low. You can be Queen Elizabeth inspecting the ships at Greenwich before they sail to the Indies. <laughs> Thank you, Titty. Uh, Susan, use the painter to make a fast to the jetty. How? Oh, I see. There's nine ring. Uh, did Queen Elizabeth have red hair? Doesn't matter. Probably a wig anyway. Come aboard, Mr Mate, and help me step the mast. Aye, aye, Captain. Can I come too? Uh, wait a minute, Roger. You and Titty stay here till they have the sail up. They need plenty of room and a free hand. She's got a little flag. I think I'll make her a better one. Mast, step! Oh, splendid. Now, uh, try hoisting the sail. She doesn't seem to have a forestay. And there isn't a place to lead the halyard to in the bows to make it do instead. Sometimes these little boats do without stays at all. Is there a cleat under the thwart where the mast is stepped? I can feel too. Then get the sail ready and hoist it and make fast there and see how she does. Right. I wonder whether the real Queen Elizabeth knew so much about ships. Oh, that Queen Elizabeth wasn't brought up close to Sydney Harbour. Sail ready. Pull on the halyard. Let's make the ship's articles. Sailing vessel, Swallow. Port, Holly Howe. Owners? Who are the owners? She belongs to us for the rest of these holidays anyhow. I shall put Walkers Limited to do for all of us. Master, John Walker. Mate, Susan Walker. Able seaman, Titty Walker. Ship's boy, Roger. Now, all you have to do is sign opposite your names. Well, Mr Mate. Sir? How soon do you think we shall be ready to put to sea? With the first breath of wind. What do you think of your crew? The best I ever shipped. Can they swim? Abel, Sim and Titty can. The boy Roger still keeps one foot on the bottom. He must learn. I don't keep one foot on the bottom all the time. You must learn as soon as possible 
not to keep it on the bottom at all. All right. That's all wrong, Roger. You ought to have said, aye, aye, sir. I nearly always do. Preparations for the voyage began. I sewed a, a brand new flag for Swallow, a blue swallow on a white background. John and Susan made lists of essential things to take. Roger danced around, getting in the way. Compass, telescope, map, whistle, lanterns, hammer and nails. Yes. Tea, sugar, milk, eggs, biscuits, corned beef. Yes. Sardines. More eggs. Bread. And cake. Yes. Tents. Ground sheets. You be careful to keep the edges of the ground sheets inside the tents, or if it rains, you'll find yourself sleeping in a puddle. Ugh. Now, what about mattresses? Rugs. Not enough. Unless you want to be like the lady who ran away with the raggle-taggle gypsies and caught a death of cold. The song doesn't say that. It only says she didn't care. Well, what happened to don't care? Came to a bad end. Exactly. A cold is a bad end when you're camping, especially on a desert island. No, we must get some hay bags filled for you to sleep on and then rugs and blankets for you to roll yourselves up in. Hmm. Next. Kettle, fishing rods, paper, pencils. Yes? Uh, don't forget these. Gosh, yes. <sighs> Matches to light the campfire. What's this? A dictionary I found, full of foreign language. What's it for? Talking with the natives. Titty! Should I pack bandages and medicines and things? Oh, no. On desert islands, they cure everything with herbs. We'll have all sorts of diseases, plagues and fevers and things. And we'll cure them with herbs the natives give us. No medicines or herbs. Anyone who wants doctoring is invalid at home. If it's really serious. But we can have a plague or a fever or two by ourselves. <laughs> What about a map? A chart, you mean? There isn't one. Why not? Our ocean has never been explored before. How can there be a chart? Uncharted waters. We'll make our own chart, then. In fact, we found a good map showing the lake in a local guidebook, and I copied it to make our own chart, leaving off all the real local names so that we could invent our own. We put together... A ship's library, too. As well as my German dictionary, we took the seaman's handy book and the Baltic pilot and simple cooking for small households. Oh, and of course I took my favourite, Robinson Crusoe, which isn't just an exciting story, but tells you just what to do on an island. The evening before we set sail... We all stood on the peak of Darien as the sun began to sink over the western hills. We looked across the lake at our island. I couldn't believe we were really going to land on it. All aboard! Aye, aye, sir. Titty, on the middle thwart. Aye, aye, sir. Your flag's looking splendid, Titty. Thanks. All on the halyard. Halyard made fun. Mr. Mate, pull down the boom. Get those cross wrinkles out. Sail set. Safe voyage. Wave bye bye, Vicky. Wave. Three cheers for the stay at home. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Farewell and adieu to you, first Spanish ladies. Adieu and farewell to you, ladies of Spain. For we're to sail to old England and may never see you again. We will really, though. Here we are, intrepid explorers making their first ever voyage into uncharted waters. What mysteries will they hold for us? What dark secrets will be revealed? Ready to go about! Mind your head, boy Roger! Ready about! Ow! Be quicker next 
time. John, steamship coming up a stand. Stand by to go about. Ready about. Hold on tight. The brake's going to rock us. Ah! Titty, grab the crockery basket. Looking ship. It's a houseboat. What's a houseboat? A boat you live in, like a house. Some people live in them all the year round. I wish we did. Father does. That's different. He's in the Royal Navy. A destroyer isn't a houseboat. You live in it just the same. Yes, but you don't stay in one place like a houseboat does. Shut up, you two. Look, there's a big fat man sitting on deck. What's he doing? Can I look through the telescope? Go on then. Well. What's he doing? I can't see. Why not? I can't see anything. Take the cap off the end. Oh. He's writing. <coughs> Give me the telescope. Hey! He's got a parrot. <coughs> He's probably a retired pirate. Pirates always have parrots. He's working out some devilish crime. My turn with the telescope. Hey! He's got a cannon. He is a pirate! Keep still, you two! You'll turn us over! Is that another island? Very small one. Just a few rocks on a tree. What's that bird doing? It's got its head under the water. There's another one. They're fishing, see? They've got India rubber necks. What are they? Cormorants. Really? Then perhaps we're near the coast of China. The Chinese have cormorants and train them to catch fish for them. I've seen a picture. When we make our chart, we'll call this Cormorant Island. Land ahoy! Land ahoy! It's the island! Keep a lookout for a good landing place. And keep a lookout for savages. We're getting closer. Boy, Roger, sing out like anything if you see any rocks under water. Aye, aye, sir. It's just a steep, rocky wall. There must be somewhere. I can see the bottom. Ready about. How about there? That bit of pebbly beach? It's not much of a harbour, but it'll do. Here goes. Ready about. Jive-o! Stand by to take in sail. Lower away. Grab the yard. Roger. Got it. Beat getting nearer. Rock on the starboard bow. Now. Hooray! We all wanted to explore straight away. But John and Susan sensibly insisted we unload Swallow to make her light enough to pull her further up the beach. Looking back... I realise our island was quite small. But to us young swallows it was enormous, with enough trees and clumps of overgrown hazels and open mossy ground to make it continually exciting. First, we headed for the north end of the island, where stood a tall pine tree which we'd often remarked upon when we'd looked across the water from the peak of Darien. Really, we ought to have a flagstaff on the top. What for? So we can hoist a flag up there, as a signal. It would make a lighthouse too. If any of us were sailing home after dark, we could hoist up a lantern to show us the way. We've got a lantern, but how do we get it up there? With a rope. Hang a rope over a branch, tie one end to the lantern and pull on the other end. We haven't any rope. We'll get some. It's a good idea, Titty. What we need first is to find the best place for our camp. Right. Come on, then. Come on, Come on John. John. How's this? Perfect. Flat, mossy ground with trees to have the tents up. Not too easily seen from anywhere. Oh, no. Look. What? Someone's had a fire here before. Natives. The natives knew how to choose the right place. Ah, oh, it's even got sticks for depth to hand the kettle on. Suppose they're still here. The ashes look very old to me. I think we're safe. 
and it's a great place to set up camp. Let's fetch the tents and all our stores. Is it supper time yet? I'm starving. Can't cook without a fire. Tell you what, Roger, you be in charge of collecting the firewood. Aye, aye, sir. Mother had taught us how to pitch tents on rocky ground where tent pegs couldn't be hammered in. First, you tied a rope between two trees as high as possible and then sling over the canvas uh, like a sheet you put out to dry. The canvas has pockets which you fill with stones to weigh it down and keep the walls apart. Then you drag the ground sheet inside and spread it. When both tents were finished, John, Susan and I crept inside one to try it out. <laughs> hey, where is everyone? <laughs> Boo! Ah! <laughs> gotcha. I knew you were in there. Looks cosy. What's that in your hand? Firewood. You need much more than that. Then fill the kettle, please, Roger. Aye, aye, sir. This is excellent. We can just see the fireplace from inside. Everything's fine except the landing place. Everybody can see it from the mainland. Let's see if we can find another one. A secret one. Come on, then. A whistle if we find one. Supper in about 20 minutes. I sounded just like Mother then. These brambles aren't very friendly. We should have brought machetes like Red Indians use. Titty, look! The perfect harbour. But it's all rocks. Yes, but there's a narrow channel of water between, see? Oh, yes. And the water in there looks very smooth. It's sheltered from the wind. Let's bring Swallow round and see if we're right. Eggs. Butter, bread, jam, tea. Got the water! Oh, he's got scum on it! Sorry. Come on, silly, I'll show you. There it is! We'll try to go in. I'll paddle with an oar over the stern. You go forward with the other, ready to fend off if there are any rocks underwater. I'd better get in front of the mast like Roger does. Now, gently does it. Watch, Roger. You push the spout underwater. Like that. Then look. Magic. No scum. All clear. Not much further. Rock underwater. Bend off. Bend off. <laughs> done it. Well done, Titty. There go the twigs. I found some good dry ones. Now carefully add the bigger sticks. Kettle. Frying pan please, Roger. Aye, aye, sir. You add some butter, please. Good. What's that? It's John. We'd better go. I expect somebody hid on the island hundreds of years ago and kept his boat here. John! Over here! Let's pull her in a bit. Look, Susan, the perfect harbour for keeping swallows safe at night. Wonderful! But how come we never saw it when we were sailing past? The rocks go so far out. And look, we can tie a painter to that tree stump. Can I do that? There you are. It's so hidden you can't see it from anywhere. If we're overpowered by enemies, we could escape from here. What did you put the cross on this tree stump for? I didn't. It must have been there already. Natives again. Or cannibals. This marks the spot where they ate six missionaries. Oh, what? The eggs, they'll be ruined. Oh,
advance. Not bad for our first meal. Tea, everyone. Yes, please. Can we start putting things on our chart? All the places we've discovered. Good idea, Titty. Now, big pine here and lookout point there. Landing place there. Harbour down there. And the camp here. Have an apple, Roger. Must I? Mother says we have to eat plenty of green things or else we'll get scurvy. What scurvy? Sailors die from it like flies. Are you all right, Titty? Susan? Aye, aye, sir. What about Roger? He's fine. Ready for lights out? Yes. Lights out. Night. Our first night under canvas. We all slept like logs. Next morning, the sun rose bright and early. In those days, every day was sunny. Well, maybe not every day, but that's how I remember it. Mother had made arrangements for us to collect milk each morning from Dixon's farm, which was on the mainland, opposite our island. So John rode Swallow across while we had a swim. Roger, of course, was still learning. You have to swim as well as splash. Aye, aye, sir. Come on, I'm holding you. In, out, in, out, in, out. Not bad. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You're cheating. You've got your feet on the bottom. All right, enough for today. Why do you have your legs in the air, Titty? I'm a comrade, but it's quite difficult. Roger, fill that kettle and go and get some firewood, please. I did those jobs yesterday. Got it. What? A stone off the bottom. What sort of stone? Probably a pearl. I'm a pearl diver comrade. Hold your can steady. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Mrs. Dixon. And mind you, if there's anything else you want, don't be afraid to come and ask for it. You fancy some toffee? I just made some. Thanks. Right. Now, there's four of you, yes? Morning. Morning, Mr. Dixon. Oh, shoo! Take those dirty boots and that fork out of my clean dairy. Aha. Grand weather we're having. Yes. Camping on the island, are you? Yes. Here. Like some. Tobacco. <laughs> Bless me, no. Look. Worms. Live ones. Dixon outside. I don't want them things wriggling and squirming all over my scrub floor. Bait, see? For when you go fishing. Thanks. Good bit of perch down by the weeds. Outside, both of you. Here's your toffee. And don't forget your milk. your hook, Susan. Just about as far as my plate will let me. Mine's only about three feet down. That's no good. Should be about a foot from the bottom. Reel it in and I'll push your float up for you. John, quick! Your float's gone! I've got something! Come on! Come on! Gosh, look at that! What is it? Perch! It's a beauty! Very scaly. Ah! Hold on, Roger! It's enormous! I'll give you a hand! Come on! Heave! My rod's bending! Hang on tight! It's a shark! It's a shark! Oh, lost it. That was a pike, Roger. Did you see its great teeth? All right, Roger. Do you think it's really safe to swim in this place? We caught several more perch, then rode back to the island to cook them for lunch. Susan had a terrible time scraping off the scales, but fried in lashings of butter, they tasted delicious. Later on, we went to Lookout Point, under the big pine, to make some more entries in our chart. Have you marked Comment Island? Yes. What about the bay where we fished? Dixon's Bay. It's very near the farm. How about Shark Bay? In memory of Roger's great fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it. Shark Bay. This must be the Antarctic to the south, and the Arctic here. What about the town there? Why not Rio? 
Rio? Why Rio? Like in the song, Away to Rio. Right. What about where we saw the houseboat? In this bay here. Houseboat Bay? Fine. I wonder what the retired pirate's up to. What's that? He's fired his cannon. Let's have a look. He has. Look at the smoke. Look over there. The sailing boat. Two boys in red hats. They're speeding away from the houseboat. Um, Amazon. The boat's called Amazon. They're hoisting a flag. Look, it's a skull and crossbones. They're pirates. Let's chase them. Come on, then. We thought the Amazon might have been heading for the town we called Rio. So we landed there and searched all the landing stages, but she was nowhere to be seen. John suggested we give up the search and go shopping instead. We bought some bread and ginger beer and a long piece of rope to attach to a lantern to make our lookout point lighthouse. Then we sailed back to the island. No sign of Amazon on the way. Later on, John called a council, and we all gathered round the campfire. Now, why did the man on the houseboat... The retired pirate... All right, Titty. Why did he shake his fist at us? Maybe this is his island. He's cross because we're here. But if it's his island, why doesn't he live here? Much nicer for the parrot. What was that? Must have been a bird. Second question. Why did he fire his cannon? Maybe he was attacking the two pirates in the Amazon. It's an arrow. Don't touch the point. It may be poison. Shh. It's him. He's winged the arrow with the poor parrot's feathers. Shut up, Diddy. Come on, after him. her right up. She shouldn't have drifted off. She's gone. We should have taken her round to the harbour. Look! He's left his pen knife behind. The camp! No one here, John. Hands up. Blum your faces. Amazons in our tent. Stand up with your hands up. Charge before we load again. What is forever? Hey! All right, all right, a parley. They're girls. Agreed. A parley and no tricks. What have you done with our ship? Where's Swallow? She's our prize. We put her in our harbour. Our harbour. Yours? How long have you been here? Days and days. This is Wildcat Island. It's been our island for years and years. Who built the fireplace? Who marked the harbour? That white cross. Anyone could put a cross on a tree. That shows it's our island. We don't even know how the harbour's marked. We do! No, we don't, Roger. There must be more to it than the white cross. Exactly. Come on, then. Let's parley. Weapons down. Teddy, you donkey, they've got our knife. I found it. It's ours. It was a present from Uncle Jim. We polished the can on his houseboat. He said if we... Shut up, Peggy. Is he your uncle? We thought he was a retired pirate. Hmm, that's quite a good thing for him to be. He could be Captain Flint. But you're pirates too. That's why he hates us. He knows what pirates are. It's time for the parley. I am John Walker, master of the swallow. This is Susan, mate. Able Seaman Titty and the boy Roger. I'm Nancy Blackett, master and part owner of the Amazon, the terror of the seas. This is Peggy Blackett, mate and part owner of the same. Her real name isn't Nancy, it's Ruth. 
But Uncle Jim said the Amazons were ruthless and... I'll shiver your timbers for you if you don't stop chattering, Peggy. Are you as well as on holiday? Yes. We live here, on the shores of the Amazon River. Well, just on the other side of the lake. Listen, let's be allies. Really, we wanted to be allies as soon as we saw your smoke on the island yesterday. Shut up, Peggy. What do you think? Well, we can be allies against Uncle Jim. Captain Flint. Captain Flint, yes. You see, he was once friendly, but now he's worse than any native because he says he's writing a book and hasn't time for us. All right, we'll be allies. Then it doesn't matter who the island belongs to. Would you like some toffee? Yes, please. We saw it when we took the camp, but we didn't like to take any. Can you spare some? Peggy, shut up. Let's all shake hands. Swallows and Amazons forever. Swallows and Amazons forever. room for both our ships, see? It's a relief to see Swallow safe. I thought we'd lost her. This is the perfect harbour, but it's tricky to sail straight in. We had to fend off the rocks underwater. That's the point of the marks. You mean there are two? We only found one, a white cross. Where's the other one? Two white crosses would make it easy for anyone to guess, so we use that fork tree. How? When you want to sail in, you keep the fork exactly above the cross. Then you can come clean through the rocks without hitting them. Brilliant. Thanks, Nancy. He's been all over the world. Where did he get the parrot? Zanzibar. Mother said he was a black sheep of the family, so he was sent away. Last year he came home and said he'd gathered enough moss and meant to settle down. Mother's his sister, you know. Anyway, he bought the houseboat and he was really one of us. We used to sail with him. He even gave us Amazon. But this year he said he had this book to write and had no time for us. We've done everything to wake him up, but it's no good. It ended by his forbidding us ever to go near him or the houseboat. Are you still at it, Peggy? Did he really fire his cannon at you yesterday? No, that was us. It was a marvellous firework from last November. One of those big Roman candles that fizz and then go off with a bang. We put it on the cabin roof and sailed away. It was a good bang. Listen, let's plan the combined attack on Captain Flint. Who'll be captain? I will, of course. But John's our captain. There can only be one captain. Then it should be me. There are more swallows than you Amazons. Tell you what, let's fight for it. Let's try to capture each other's ship. That'll be good practice. Whoever wins will be flagship. We'll win. Where do you keep your boat? Here's our chart. Right. This is Wildcat Island. It's a very good name, that. We'll write it in. And we live over here. Up the Amazon River, just before Octopus Lagoon, here. You'll see our boathouse, it's just there. War begins tomorrow. Is, the Amazons know the lake much better than we do. Yes, like the marks in the harbour. If only there was one thing we knew how to do that they didn't. That would help us. Got it! Leading lights. What are they? I'll show you. Roger, get the lanterns. Then we'll need two large nails and a hammer. John's brilliant idea was to make it possible for us to sail Swallow into the harbour, not just in daytime, but at night, too. He remembered that in a real harbour, there are lights to help ships find their way in in the dark. By putting one lantern against the white cross on the tree stump and nailing the other lantern to the forked tree, we could do the same. Line up the lights and come safely into harbour. Now we were able to make a night attack on Amazon and find our way back, something the Amazons couldn't do. We tried it out, rowing Swallow out into the lake and back in again. Next day, we were all ready to set off toward the Amazon River. But there wasn't a breath of wind on the lake. Sailing was out of the question. So we rowed over to the mainland instead and went exploring. 
we found a magnificent waterfall. I imagined it was Niagara Falls. And then we, we heard a strange sound. We followed it through the bushes and trees. The smell of smouldering wood tickled our nostrils. Then we came to a clearing where long piles of branches were neatly stacked. Then we saw a great mound of earth with little jets of blue wood smoke spurting from it. A man with a spade was patting the mound and putting a spade full of earth wherever the smoke showed. Not far away was a tent made of canvas and, and poles sloping together. Look! A red Indian wigwam! Hello, you. Come to have a look, have you? Huh? Good morning. It is that. It's a grand day. Like a look inside. Folk generally want to. Hmm? May we? I think it's safe. In you come. Sit you down. Aye, there. Do you live here always? Aye. While we're burning the charcoal, someone has to keep the fire down like day and night. That way, the charcoal is smooth and black and good to use. Hmm? For artists to draw masterpieces with. Aye, lass. Try a bit. <laughs> That's it. Now, would you like to see what we keep for luck? Hmm? What is it? It's a snake. An adder. Like to see him? Yes, please. You're sitting on him. <gasps> <laughs> oh, he's in this old cigar box. He's young Billy's adder. Now, come outside. Eh? Young Billy, let them have a look at your adder. Oh, Dad been showing you around? Is he your son? That's right. He doesn't look like a son. <laughs> <laughs> he's got sons and grandsons of his own. I'm old Billy. And he's young, Billy. Ah. There he is. Is it safe to touch it? Oh, I wouldn't. Look. I give him a prod with a stick. He's grabbing it, see? Ah. Never you go near an adder. Right. Back here you go. There. Ah. And mind where you're stepping in the woods. There's plenty about, and if you happen to step on one, he'll bite. Folk have died. But he'll get out of your way if he knows you're coming. Hey, look at my mound. Uh, can't leave it a minute. See? Just a bit of a hole, and out he comes. Like the adder is fire. I uh, uh, spade full of earth does the trick. Uh. Why don't you let it burn if you're burning it anyway? Oh, we want it to burn good and slow. The slower the fire, the better the charcoal. If I covered up my campfire with earth, mm -hmm. would it burn all night? Aye, cover it with clods of earth and pour some water on them to damp them. He'll be all right in the morning. Ready to boil your kettle. Are you, uh, camping on the island? Yes. You had those blacket lasses with you yesterday, hadn't you? Aye, we saw their little boat. <laughs> I remember when their mother and Master Jim used to come up here when they was no bigger than you are now. The man on the houseboat? Aye. Captain Flint, we're going to fight him! Quiet, Roger. You know, Dad... It'd be a good thing to let him know what folk are saying. Aye, it would, that. Will you be seeing those lasses again? Yes, as soon as there's a wind for sailing. Now, you tell them to tell their Uncle they Jim... They can't! They're at war with him. Now, Titty... They'll tell him right enough. Tell them to tell him that young Billy, that's me... Sent him word to put a good padlock on that houseboat of his if he leaves it at nights. Down in the pub, there was a deal too much talking going on about that houseboat and the valuables inside. 
Oh, there's more than plenty of wild young lads that are up to anything without thinking twice. We'll tell them. And thank you for having us. <laughs> and for showing us your serpent. Bye, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. With your back, Roger. In, out. In, out. And you, Titty, heave. In, out. In, out. They're the finest savages we ever met. They're the first savages we ever met. I expect the serpent is for witchcraft. Medicine men, I should think they are. They're so old. Medicine men from the wandering tribe. Were they enemies? No, not just then. But of course, they might be. I like them. So did I, especially the serpent. But they were savages all the same. Come on, you two, keep rowing. In, out, in, out. What is it, Jan? The two Billies asked us to tell the Amazons to give a message to Captain Flint. Well? Well... If we do, they won't. Won't what? Give him the message. They're at war with Captain Flint, and so are we. But if the houseboat's really in danger... <laughs> exactly. Roger, concentrate! Roger and I were too young to understand how the real world was beginning to interrupt the fantasy world of our island adventures. But John felt a nagging sense of responsibility. And when we returned to the island, the situation became even more worrying. Let's look for some pieces of turf to keep the fire in, like the charcoal burners do. I'm going to try it tonight. Hey, what's that by our tent? It's a note. Call to tell you that you would jolly well better leave my houseboat alone. Once is quite enough. No joking. James Turner. But we've never touched his horrible houseboat. He's a beast. You'd better go and see him, John. We'll all go and sink his beastly boat. No, Susan's right. I'll go and explain. And give him his message, too. Look here. Did you find my note? Yes. Did you read? Yes. Did you read it? Yes. I told you to leave my houseboat alone. I hear you come again. Clear up. Fast. But I've come to tell you... if you've got any more fireworks, the best thing you can do is drop them in the lake. If you must let them off, let them off in a field. But I haven't. Well, that was the last one, was it? Well, it did enough damage. Look at my cabin roof. But I've never had any fireworks. At least, not since last November. That won't do. And I've never been near your boat. Never as near as I am now. Then who set fire to her? I saw you afterwards in your boat, all four of you. Yes, but we were just... Clear off. I've nothing to say to you. But I came to tell Clear you off. that... I don't like talking to liars. But and you don't said... let me see you here again. Mothers are remarkable people. Ours most certainly was. When we're young, we may not truly appreciate how they somehow sense exactly the right time to keep quiet and let their children just get on with things, and even more special, how they often know the right time to not interfere exactly, but rather gently step in to help or to reassure. Captain Flint's note had cast a despondent gloom over our adventure. But almost like magic, Mother arrived from the mainland to pay us a visit. Yay! Shh, 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 shh. 
Don't wake Vicky. Rowing over here got her nicely off to sleep. Now, one, two, three, four. Hmm, no one drowned yet. That's a good thing because it's somebody's birthday. <gasps> Who's? It can't be mine because mine's on New Year's Day. And this is summer. <laughs> Whose is it? Vicky's, of course. Rather too young for a birthday, really. So I brought a present for each of you. Yay! What about Vicky? Oh, Vicky's got a lamb and an elephant. Now, why don't you fetch the hamper from the boat and we can have tea? Yay! Yay! More birthday cake? Yes, yes please. please. Where are the presents? Here. I told you they were little ones. Thank, Thank you. you. Torches. <laughs> Perfect. Hmm. I can read all night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I swam three strokes today. Really? You'll have to show me. No feet on the bottom, you know. Not even one toe. I hear you've had some visitors. How did you know? Mrs. Blackett called on me yesterday and told me her girls met you. Nancy and Peggy? They're the Amazon pirates. Hmm. Mrs. Blackett said they were a couple of tomboys. She was afraid they might be too wild for you. They aren't any wilder than we are. <laughs> I hope not. Their uncle lives during the summer in that houseboat in the bay. You haven't been meddling with it, have you? Who told you that? We haven't. But he thinks we have. He's told Mrs. Blackett. How rotten. Let's go and sink his horrible houseboat. Titty, don't be silly. He left us this note. Oh. And I went to give him the message from the charcoal burners. We went to see them. They had a serpent. They said he ought to put a padlock on the houseboat because some wild young lads in the pub were talking about the valuables inside. I think he's going away for a couple of days, so that makes sense. He must have been pleased to get the message. He wouldn't listen to me. He called me a liar. He wouldn't have called you that if he knew you. It doesn't matter what people think or say if they don't know you. What did you do? I came away. Well, you did your best. Any more tea in that pot, Susan? The next day, a fair wind blew up. Ideal for sailing. Ideal for trying to capture the Amazon. But first, we had to set up our lighthouse. John climbed up the big pine with rope tied to his belt. He looped it over a high branch. More rope, please. Then catch the other end and tie on the lantern. Lantern secure. Now, hoist away. Perfect. Now tie it off. Rope tied off. Now, let's go through the plan again. The Amazons will expect us to attack by advancing up the river to their boathouse in daylight. Because they think we have to be back here before dark. Right. So we won't. Not until after dark when they'll think we've given up. But they don't know about our lights. Exactly. What happens if they attack us? We'll be watching and waiting for them on the lake in Swallow all day. All except me. I'll be here. Titty, are you sure you don't mind being here on your own? Of course not. Now, don't forget. You light the lantern for the lighthouse and hoist it up just after it gets dark. When we get back, we'll give you a signal to light the harbour lanterns. The candles won't last long and you'll know it's us, not the enemy. What's the signal? An owl call, like this. <coughs> All right? Aye, aye, sir. Meanwhile, the Amazons were making plans, too. The secret is to get them over here without them seeing us. Then we sail to the island without them realising it. Then what? You leave me on the island, ready to snatch swallow when they come back. What do I do then? It's obvious. Sail on and wait in the next bay. When I've called swallow, I'll come and join you. But I want to be there when swallow's captured. You can't be in two places at once. You'll be in Amazon, waiting. It's the most exciting part. I suppose so. Have we got everything? Enough provisions for all day and more. Where's Roger? 
Oughtn't I to have the telescope for keeping what? Good idea, Titty. Here you are. Wait for me. What are you doing, Bucket? You look like a football. But you said put two on of everything. I said bring, not put. Oh well, we'll pretend you're going to the North Pole. Ready? Cast off! Goodbye, Titty! Bye, Bye Titty! titty. Bye. Goodbye! Bye! Good luck! Don't forget about the lights! Aye, aye, sir! Swallows forever! Swallows forever! I waved and waved until Swallow was a speck far off across the lake. The adventure was about to begin. In episode one of Swallows and Amazons, Mother and Mrs. Dixon were played by Penny Downey. Roger, Joe Sowbutz, Titty, Phoebe Phillips, Susan, Flora Harris, and John, John Paul Eakins. Adult Titty was played by Jean Anderson, Mr. Dixon and old Billy, Jerome Willis, Nancy, Catherine Poole, Peggy, Jackie Swainson, young Billy, James Taylor, and Uncle Jim, Nicholas Leprevo. The music was composed by Nina Humphreys. Clarinet was played by Duncan Prescott and violin by Sonia Zlani. Swallows and Amazons was directed by Louise Armitage and Catherine Bailey and is a Catherine Bailey Limited production for BBC Radio 4. Swallows and Amazons by Arthur Ransom Adapted for radio by David Wood Episode 2 Summer 1929 Have we got everything? Enough provisions for all day and more. Where's Roger? Oughtn't I to have the telescope for keeping what? Good idea, Titty. Here you are. What are you doing, Roger? You look like a football. But you said put two on of everything. I said bring, not put. Oh well, we'll pretend you're going to the North Pole. Ready? Cast off. Goodbye, Titty. Bye, Bye Titty. titty. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Good luck. Don't forget about the lights. Aye, aye, sir. Swallows forever. I waved and waved until Swallow was a speck far off across the lake. The adventure was about to begin. I was all alone on Wildcat Island. My sister Susan and my brothers John and Roger, in our sailing boat called the Swallow, were off to capture the Amazon, the boat owned by Nancy and Peggy Blackett, the Amazons. <laughs> this all happened seventy or more years ago, but I remember as though it were yesterday. Those glorious sunny days on holiday in the Lake District when the real world stood still and our own private world of freedom and adventure took over. The Amazons and we swallows had become allies in the war against Captain Flint, who lived on a houseboat with his parrot. I had thought he was a retired pirate, but he was really the Blackett's Uncle Jim, 
So preoccupied with his book writing, he had no time to join in their exploits, so now he was the enemy. But before we launched an attack, we were attempting to capture each other's ships to decide which should be our flagship. I had agreed to stay on Wildcat Island to light up the lighthouse at Lookout Point and the harbour lights to assist the Swallows' nighttime return. I suppose I must have felt a little lonely, but I always had a vivid imagination. Twenty-five years ago this day, I, Robinson Crusoe, was wrecked on this desolate place. I built a hut with branches and moss, caught fish with a sharpened stick, and sometimes hid up a tree for fear of ravenous beasts. It's a fair old wind. Where are we heading first, John? Rio. From outside Rio, we can get a good view towards the Amazon River. We don't want them slipping past us. Hey! Look! The houseboat! I'd rather not, Roger. Captain Flint called me a lie yesterday, and I'm not. But it's him! Captain Flint! So it is. He's rowing away from the houseboat. Suitcases and things piled up in the back. Good riddance! Quiet, Roger! Robinson Crusoe had a parrot to talk with. Over years and years, he taught it to talk. I wonder if Captain Flint's parrot can talk. <sighs> Wish he'd been nicer to John. Captain Flint, not the parrot. John could have given him the message about locking his houseboat properly. I wonder if Robinson Crusoe had a clock. Maybe I'd better go to lookout point and keep watch. Away to Rio. Da 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 da. Shut up, Roger. Keep looking. Any sign of those pirates yet? Not a sail in sight, sir. We can't have missed them. We'll head for the Amazon River, but keep close to the shore. Ready about. Robinson Crusoe scanned the horizon with his trusty telescope. Water, water, everywhere. Ahoy there! It's Mother. Titty. No, it's not. It's Man Friday. Hello, Man Friday. Welcome to my desert island. Where are the others? <laughs> be the entrance to the river, beyond all those reeds. Let's go and find the Amazon's boathouse. Don't be silly, Roger. They'll see us coming. We'll hide by the bank here. They're bound to appear soon. I'm hungry. We all are, I should think. It's past lunchtime. Let's have our picnic. All right. But we must keep watch. Boy, Roger, help me lower sail and unstack the mast. Aye, aye, sir. Where are the others? They've gone and swallow on an expedition. I'm Robinson Crusoe till they get back. <sighs> I expect they've gone to meet the Blackett children. Man Friday oughtn't to know anything about them. Oh, very well, I won't. But what are you doing all by yourself? I'm in charge of the camp. I see. Huh, have they left you anything to eat? I've got my rations in the tent. Well, it's high time you had them. Will you let Man Friday put some more wood on the fire and make some tea? Hmm? Now, I can't stay long, but perhaps they'll be back before I go. I don't think they will. They've sailed across the Pacific Ocean. Timbuktu is nothing to where they've gone. Well, I'll make some tea anyhow. Now, what have they left you in the way of rations? A good big hunk of pemmican, some brown bread, some biscuits and a large fat slice of cake. Hmm. What about butter and potatoes? Probably. We could look. What if we were to make some pemmican cakes? Any more?
more chocolate? No, you finished it ages ago. How long are we going to wait here? Till it's dark, Roger. That's the whole point. Like Father says, in naval warfare, two things are important. To know exactly what you want to do. Capture Amazon. Right. And to do it in the manner your enemy least expects. And they won't be expecting us to invade their boathouse by night. But what if the Amazons have got a good plan too? The Amazons did have a good plan. To wait until they knew the swallows had entered the Amazon River, then sail off to Wildcat Island. Then what? I've told you, Peggy. You leave me on the island ready to snatch swallow when they get back. What do I do then? It's obvious. You sail on and wait in the next bay. When I've collared Swallow, I'll come and join you. Right, off we go. Up the river towards the lake. Then we'll hide in the reeds till the Swallows go past. Man Friday, would you mind telling me some of your life before you came to this island? Oh, well, I was caught by some very savage... savages... They put me in a huge stew pot and chanted strange songs. Then what? They lit a fire under the stew pot and started dancing all around me. What did you do? I waited till no one was looking and jumped out of the pot and escaped. Mmm. These pemmican cakes are tasty. Good. I've never really liked pemmican. Surprising what a few potatoes and a bit of butter can do. And cooking in the open air always makes things tastier. Did you go camping in Australia when you were little? Not on desert islands. On the sheep station there was no lake or sea for miles and miles. We sometimes ate outside, but it was often just too hot. Were there snakes? Yes, but I can't remember meeting many. They hide in the dust. We met one yesterday. On the island? No, up in the woods. The charcoal burners keep one in a cigar box. It's an adder. They bite if you step on them. You should never go too close to snakes. Or kangaroos, for that matter. Kangaroos are fun, though. At a distance. One kick and they can kill you. I preferred opossums. They have pockets in their fronts, too, to keep the young ones in. Oh, then there were emus. They lay eggs as big as a baby's head. Did you have pets? Well, I had a pony. And my father used to catch little brown bears in the bush. Did you keep them? Not for long. But the little ones were adorable. Oh, kettle's boiling. Where do you keep the tea? This'll do, Peggy. We're hidden by the reeds. The swallows can't see us here. What happens if they don't come? They're bound to. We just wait and watch. Let them sail past us up the river and hurry off to Wildcat Island. <sighs> Don't go to sleep, Roger. Sorry. How much longer do we have to stop here? It'll get dark soon. Can't we set off for the boathouse, John? We don't want to be too late. What about Titty? She's on her own. <sighs> Sorry, Titty, I can't stop longer. I have to pick up baby Vicky. She's with Mrs. Dixon. Are you sure you're all right here by yourself? They'll be back soon, I expect. Well, I hope so. It'll be dark fairly soon. Wouldn't you like to come home with me to Holly Howe? You could watch and shout to them when they come past, or you could come on a visit to me and spend the night and run along the road to Mrs Dixon's in the morning to join John when he comes with the milk, hmm? We could leave a note here to say where you've gone. Oh, I was tempted. Somehow, with Mother going... The island seemed to be much lonelier than before she came. But then I remembered the battle with the Amazons and the leading lights and the lighthouse and that I was in charge of the camp. Uh, no, thank you. I'd rather stay here. I've got jobs to do. Jobs? What jobs? Well, you know. How could I tell her that without me the others couldn't find the harbour in the dark? Uh, s supper and things. You go. I'll be fine. If they're much later, you jolly well let them cook their own supper. 
Hmm? Goodbye then, Robinson Crusoe. Goodbye, Man Friday. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed my island. Very much indeed. Mother! Want to come? No. Only goodbye. Bye! Robinson Crusoe spied the departing Man Friday through his telescope. It's all misty. Try the other eye. Let's go. It's nearly dark. Roger, do you want to row? Aye, aye, sir. Shh. Sorry. <laughs> Roger, hold your back. Don't bend your arms till the end of the stroke. I'm pulling with all of me, but I've got too many clothes on. <laughs> Shh. We're in the river. Peggy, look. It's a swallow's. Shh. Keep down. Ow! Shut up, Peggy! My knee! Quiet! They're coming! The boy Roger's rowing! Try not to splash, Roger. Sorry. They mustn't hear us coming. <coughs> What's that? Only a duck. Quack, 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 quack. Shut up, Peggy, you go! Don't overdo it. <laughs> Shh! They're going past. Any sign of the Amazon's boathouse? It's somewhere on the right bank. That means it's on our left. How can it be on the left if it's on the right? It's on the right of the map, but on our left as we go up the river. Get it? Not really. It's there, look. Black and square against the sky. Well spotted, Susan. I'd better take over the oars, Roger. You find the torch. Can you see them? No, they've gone out towards the boathouse. We've done them, Pecky. We've done them good and proper. Yes, Amazons forever. Step the mast and hoist the sail. Work it on. Here we come. World Cup Island and Amazons forever. After Man Friday had gone back to the mainland, I occupied myself by walking round the island. I watched a small bird which must have been a dipper, perched on a stone outside the harbour. He kept bobbing up and down, up and down, and flopped into the water and flew up and out and away. Then I returned to the camp and read some Robinson Crusoe. at work, I diverted myself with talking to my parrot and teaching him to speak, and I quickly learned him to know his own name, and at last to speak it out pretty loud, Paul, which was the first word I ever heard spoken in the island by any mouth but my own. If only I had a parrot, the island would be perfect. But thinking of parrots made me think of Captain Flint. And thinking of Captain Flint made me think of his horrible note and how he'd called John a liar. So I, I made a cup of tea and boiled two eggs for my supper. Time went very slowly, even so. I wondered what the others were doing. In fact, they had just reached what they hoped would be the Amazon's boathouse. Shine the torch, Roger. Look! A skull and crossbones! This is it, all right. Let's go in. There's a rowing boat. No sign of Amazon. She must be here. Shine the torch right round, Roger. She's not here. What's that pinned to the landing stage? It's a note. What does it say? Torch. To the swallows. Ha ha, the Amazon pirates. They fooled us. You know what they've done? Made us look silly. Shut up, Roger. 
No, it's quite simple. They've hidden her up river. Shouldn't we be getting back to the island? No, let's go up river. It won't take long. We know they haven't put to sea. We've been watching all day. Susan, you row for a bit. All right. Rio looks really exciting all lit up. What's Rio? The town. Rio's the swallow's name for it. Was on their chart. It's a good name. Nancy, it's really quite late. Shut up, Peggy. Pirates don't worry about things like that. Mothers do. She'll think we've gone to bed. Don't worry. What can you see, Roger? Nothing. Flash the torch, then. We're a long way from the bank. This must be what they called Octopus Lagoon. The very place for them to hide Amazon. Ah! Something's pulling at my oar! Hold <laughs> on! It's stuck! Torch, Roger! I've dropped it! It's all right! I've got it! They hang on to the oars like octopuses. Must be why they call it Octopus Lagoon. Perhaps they are octopuses. Titty read to me about how they put their arms out long and grab people out of boats. Rubbish, Roger. They're only flowers. Shine the torch. I wouldn't mind even if there were octopuses. Look over to Port Peggy, Uncle Jim's houseboat. He's still up. His lights are on. They didn't know that Captain Flint had gone away for the night, but the news had reached Rio. On board the houseboat were a couple of uninvited visitors. No, you are the rubbish. No, what's that? It's a bloomin' bird. That it, shut up, stupid bird. Oh, what? Stuck my blessed toe, something under the bunk. Hang on, it's a box. Out the way. Hey, it's a cabin tree. Not oh, locked. What's an idiot? Well, how do I know, you flaming idiot? It's locked. Variable's got to be. Yeah, come on then. Yeah. Uh, shut up. All this time, I was on Wildcat Island. As darkness descended, I went to Lookout Point, lit the lighthouse lantern and carefully hoisted it on the rope to the top of the big pine. Now all I had to do was to wait for the hoot of John's owl call, the signal to light up the leading light lanterns at the harbour. I put more wood on the fire, wrapped myself in a blanket, checked I had the matches safe in my pocket, and read a few more pages of Robinson Crusoe. I don't remember any more. I must have dozed off. It's easier if you keep the oars slanted down and forwards. Then they don't go so deep in the water and get caught. Ah, I can't move the tiller! Coming! Grab the oars, Roger! It's all caught up with lily stalks between the rudder and the boat. They won't budge! Do be careful! That's a bit clearer. Try now. Moving. Phew. There's no light at all now. Even the moon's clouded over. We'll never find Amazon tonight. If we waited till morning, we could. What about Titty? We'll go back. She'll be worried. Look, Peggy. There's Wakat Island. It's pretty dark. We can just see it against the sky. Nancy, what's that light high up above the island? The swallows must have made a lighthouse. A lighthouse, brilliant. Very thoughtful of them. Very helpful. Stand by to jive. Aye, aye, sir. You'd think I would have heard their voices so near the island, but I was so sound asleep, I, I didn't. The campfire was still burning, but only just. Oh, heavens! My mind raced. I'd fallen asleep. Was that John's signal, or had I dreamt it? 
I tried to jump up, but I was tangled up in the blanket. Then suddenly, I heard the creak of a boom swinging over as the boat went about. It must be them. I've got to do the landing lights. Where's the torch? Quick, check the matches. Off to the harbour! Do keep a lookout, Roger. There's nothing to look at. Until it's too late. Susan, backwater, back. I stumbled along the path to the harbour. Thank goodness I had the torch. I found the fork tree and took out the box of matches. Hurry, hurry. Go on, you silly cannel. Light, light. That's it. First lantern lit. Now the other one. Yes. Lantern light ready. In you come, Swallows! Little did I realise, Swallow was far away, in the mouth of the Amazon River. There's a bit more wind. We must have reached the open sea. I can see lights far away! Rio lights. We're out of the river. Susan, hold the torch, please. I'm going to hoist the sail and reef. Even Father says you shouldn't be ashamed to reef a small boat in the dark. Are you cold, Roger? Rather. You'd better snuggle down in that blanket. Peggy, look! They've put lights in the harbour marks. Makes it simple to enter the harbour in the dark. Brilliant! We've never thought of that. Line at the marks, Peggy. Guide us in. Watch the boom. Ready about. She's asleep. <sighs> no, I'm not. Reefing complete. Let's look at the compass. Torch, please. Almost exactly southeast. Right, hoist sail. How are we going to know how far we've gone? I'll count a hundred for each tack. Let me have the tiller, Susan. You'd better keep warm too. Here we go. One, two, three. Lanterns are really bright. Come on, swallows. Come on. Left a bit, not too far. That's Peggy's voice. Oh no, it's the Amazons. It's a real owl. It wasn't John Signal after all. What have I done? Ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight. Ready, Susan? Ninety-nine. A hundred. Ready about... One, two, three... Wouldn't Titty have liked it? Like what? Sailing in the dark. Janet, come on. Great idea, those lights. What beats me is however they managed to get here before us. They must have rode like smoke. It's unbelievable. Why is it swallow in the harbour? They must have left you at the landing place, lit the lights for us and scooted back to camp, pretending they've been back for hours. Come on, let's go and surprise them. As Nancy and Peggy made their way from the harbour to the camp, I could have kicked myself. I'd shown the Amazons into the harbour, and the other swallows would come back to find the island in the hands of the enemy. They'd never forgive me. Idiot. But then I had my idea. It didn't matter which of the swallows captured the Amazon, and here was the Amazon right in front of me, unprotected. Why not? A moment later, I was a bored Amazon. Paddling her backwards out of the harbour, carefully keeping the two harbour lights in line. Slowly, slowly, further and further out, till I knew it was safe to go faster. Ah, suddenly. 
Chimney? I heard voices. Swallows ahoy! John! Susan! Swallows ahoy! I've done it! I've done it! I've captured Amazon! Swallows ahoy! Where on earth are they? <gasps> Nancy, Amazon's gone! <gasps> she must have drifted away! You couldn't have beached her properly! Me? But she couldn't have drifted against the wind! Then we've been done. They've outwitted us good and proper. The swallows? Who else, you chump headed galoot? What are we going to do? We're supposed to be in bed. If we're late for breakfast in the morning, they're bound to find out. Oh, shut up, Peggy. This must be far enough. It must be near Cormorant Island. Nothing more can happen till morning, and I've got Amazon. Where's the anchor? There's even a blanket! 56, 57, 58. What is it? Can't you hear it? The wind in the trees. We must be near the bank. Quick, Susan, lower the sail. Roger, torch. Rocks, rocks! Ah! Are you all right? Yes. Roger? Aye, aye, sir. Is Swallow all right? Where's the torch? It's a landing strip, thank goodness. Pure luck we missed the rocks. Give me the painter. What are we going to do now? Stay here till first light. What about Titty? She's at the camp. She'll be all right. She's got a tent. Little did John know I was really in Amazon, or that Nancy and Peggy were marooned on Wildcat Island. As we all settled down for an uncomfortable night, it was just as well our mothers had no idea where we were. I must have dozed off to sleep, but suddenly I heard voices. At first I thought I was dreaming. We must be near it now, not yet. Look at the light. Those kids have gone on the other island. Another hundred yards at least. Hey, what's that boat doing there? Oh, no. They'd spotted Amazon. I tried to wriggle down even lower. I held my breath. I, I could feel my heart thumping. Someone's moored it. Do you want to have a look? No, please. I was terrified. I stiffened. Like a rabbit caught in a car's headlights. If only I could wake up and find I was dreaming. But I was awake, all right. Ah, no time. It can't be far now. Hey, hey, go a bit easier. Don't! Told you, you stupid idiot. You bloomin' well smashed the damn boat. Give us a hand. I don't see why we couldn't take it with us. Oh, what a flaming motorbike. Bring a car next week. Blast it. Why didn't you bring a chisel to smash it open? Whoa, we'll need more than a chisel. Now, we better bury it. Bury it? You must be joking. Well, uh, but, uh, cover up with these big rocks then, eh? I just hope it'll be worth it. Oh, it's heavy enough. Whatever he keeps in there must be worth having. Oh. Nah, that, that'll do. Well, come on, then. Right. Shove her up. Gosh. Oh, the relief I felt as I heard them row off. I listened, hardly daring to move, until I could hear no more. And then I must have drifted exhausted back to sleep. Next morning, at first light, Swallow, with John, Susan and a, a very sleepy Roger, set sail back towards Wildcat Island.
The lake's really beautiful at this time of day. Look, Roger. What? The mist on the water. Look! Ship ahoy! So there is. She's adrift. No, she's not. She's anchored. Hang on, she looks like the Amazon. She is! It's the Amazon! We found her! Quiet, Roger. They must be asleep. Let's pull alongside. It's Titty! Hello! I got her! I got her! Yay! However did you do it? Where are the Amazons? They've got our camp. They've got Wildcat Island. I couldn't help it. I was asleep. And there was an owl, and I thought it was you. And I lit the lights, and they came into the harbour. Then they went to the camp, and I took Amazon. Who cares about the camp? It was whoever could capture the other ship. And now we've got her! I thought we'd failed. Swallow his flagship after all. Well done, Titty. <laughs> Titty. I wish you were my crew. We must go. If we're not at breakfast, Mother may realise and not let us come out later. Oh, yes. We haven't told you, Swallows, yet. Mother says we can come and camp with you tonight. We'd like that, if you would. Of course. Yes, please. All right with you, Captain John. Of course. I thought we could make a joint raid on Captain Flint. Hey, we nearly forgot to give you the message. What message? From the savages. We went up into the forest and saw them, and they showed us their serpent. You've been seeing the billies, the charcoal burners? Well, they're sort of savages. They live in a wigwam. They gave us a message for you. We were to tell you to tell him... Who? Captain Flint. That old Billy, or young Billy, I forget which, said that he ought to put a good lock on his houseboat when he leaves her. But why? Because of us? No, because of some talk he heard among the other natives. We couldn't give you the message because there was no wind and I didn't know what to do about it. I tried to give him the message, but he wouldn't listen. But if he locks up the houseboat, we shan't be able to raid it for green feathers for arrows. If he doesn't lock it up, it may be raided by someone else. We ought not to let it be wasted on natives. We'll tell him. Let him put a padlock on it. Let him put ten padlocks. We'll smash them with crowbars. I'll tell him now, on the way home. But you can't. He's gone away. Gone away? We saw him go. Well, he's back hit then. We saw his light in the houseboat on our way here last night. The cabin windows were all lit up. We can't tell him now. Why not? Because we're meant to be in bed. Shiver my timbers, so we are. I'd forgotten that. Shiver. So long, swallows. See you later, then. Bye. Bye. Roger, go to bed this minute. But it's tomorrow. <laughs> I don't care if it's the day before yesterday. March. <laughs> Dixon. Morning? Why, it's afternoon already. You're a bit late for your milk, young John. Sorry, we overslept. We were late going to bed. I was just saying to Dixon I thought maybe he should row over to see if you were all right, or up and go along the road to Oliao to see if you were gone home. Well, hold your can steady. Uh, he didn't, did he? What? Go and see Mother. No, no. <laughs> we were really that worried. Now, look... 
There's a dozen eggs and half a seed cake. Don't want you all going hungry. Thank you. Thanks very much. Mother? Hello, stranger. Look, Vicky, it's John. Look, Mother, I think I must talk to you. I'll say you should. What time did you get back last night? After I left Titty, I kept a lookout for you until quite late. We didn't get back till this morning. So the Blackets made you stay the night? Oh, poor Titty. It wasn't poor Titty at all. She did better than any of us. She captured Amazon all by herself. Where were the Blackets? On Wildcat Island. But where were you? We were up the Amazon River. But it got too dark, and we had to stop until it was light enough to see. Don't you think that was very nearly like being what Father calls duffers? It was, rather. But, Mother, it was war, and our only chance. I promise we won't stay out at night again. There's no need, anyway. The war's over. We won. And nobody caught a cold or anything. All right. But no more sailing at night, hmm? And no more getting into scrapes at all. You've two days left, and I don't want to hear of you getting into any more trouble. Names and addresses, please. My name is John Walker. Name Walker. Address? Here. Where? Here. For heaven's sake, Constable, get on with it. Sir? Sure. Now, that won't do. Where do you live? In these tents. Now, look here. Stop this nonsense. You've gone too far this time. I've had enough. And if of what, Uncle Jeff? What the devil are you two doing here? We're camping here tonight. Mother said we could if we didn't go near you. Shut up, Peggy. What's going on? Now then, Miss Nancy, your uncle's houseboat was burgled last night, and he thinks these children have done it. No, we didn't. It's not true. It's not true. What rot? They never had anything to do with it. They weren't even here last night. We never did anything, really. Except John tried to deliver you a message from young Billy to warn you. I rode over to tell you. And you wouldn't listen. Well, um, what about that firework exploding and damaging Mr Turner's houseboat roof, then? That was us, and not the swallows. Sorry, Uncle Jim, but you deserved it. You haven't spoken to us all summer because you've been writing your stupid book. The swallows tried to warn you, and now you've been burgled, and it serves you right. I see. That's how it is, is it? You've been an awful pig to John. Uh, uh, now, calm uh, down, Miss uh, Nancy. Uh, it's all right, Council. I'll deal with this. Uh, young man, um, John, is it? I was altogether in the wrong. I ought to have known you were telling the truth. Anyway, I should have listened to you. I'm very sorry. <laughs> cross-grained, curmudgeonly idiot. If I'd listened to John... You know, my houseboat looked as if half a hundred wildcats had had a scrimmage in it. And, of course, they took my cabin trunk. Was it a heavy one? It was, rather. Did it have gold ingots in it? Uh, afraid not. Typewriter, diaries, old log books, and, worst of all, the book I've been writing. About your pirate past? Uh, well, <laughs> in a way. Was it a very good book? I doubt it, Titty. And now I might just as well not have written it. And been more friendly all summer. Oh, Nancy, don't rub it in. Oh, come on. How can I make up for lost time? Well, not long ago, the Swallows and Amazons became allies. Oh, yes. Allies against Captain Flint. I see. And, um, who's Captain Flint? You are, actually. Me? Yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to declare war on you. Well, come on, then. Better late than never. I... Captain Flint challenge you, the Swallows and the Amazons, to capture my boat at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yay! Accept! Accept! We accept your challenge. Blood and thunder, death or glory! Yay! He can be a jolly good pirate when he wants to be.
thanks for my tea and the excellent sea cake. Thank Mrs. Dixon for that. Have a safe and pleasant night, one and all, till tomorrow. Night, Uncle Jim. Bye, Bye. Captain Flint. Captain Flint? Yes? I know where the treasure's hidden. Treasure? What treasure? Yours, of course. I heard some pirates burying it last night. Steady on, Titty. They had a huge box. It was very heavy. You were dreaming. I wasn't dreaming. I heard them. It was in the middle of the night. Captain Flint, you must believe me. It's true. I only wish I could. Goodbye, all. Good night, Uncle Jim. Captain Flint. <laughs> Captain Flint didn't believe me. Nobody believed me. Well, somehow I had to prove I wasn't making it up, or that I'd been dreaming. There was only one way. Next morning, at the crack of dawn, I crept into the boys' tent and managed to wake Roger without waking John too. We went to the harbour and carefully paddled Swallow out. Then we took one oar each. Pull harder, boy, Roger. All right. I mean, aye, aye, sir. Where are we going? We're going to land on a desert island to look for pirate treasure. The treasure the pirates took from Captain Flint. There may be land crabs or alligators or enemies of all kinds. The treasure may be buried deep in dead men's bones. We may be all our lives finding it. I don't want to miss breakfast. Let's get a move on, then. Isn't that Cormorant Island? I can see the Cormorants. Yes, they're guarding the treasure. Stop rowing a minute. Now, Roger, concentrate. This is roughly where I was the other night, when I was anchored in Amazon, right? Right. I heard the pirates row past me. Real pirates? I couldn't see them, but I heard their oars and I heard them talk. They swore like real pirates, and then I heard them crash into the rocks. What rocks? Well, it must have been... Those rocks. There aren't any others. Cormant Island rocks. Then what? I heard them unload the treasure and row off again. It must still be there. Come on, dig in. Come on, Roger, treasure hunt. Will Swallow be safe? We'd better wind the paint around that rock. Now, follow me. It's all rocks and loose stones. It's a real desert island. I'm glad we live on Wildcat Island and not here. Keep a lookout for a skeleton. Ow! My knee! Which knee is it? It's the, it was the one that wasn't scraped before. At least not the one that got scraped last, but the other one. Here, use my hanky. Here are lots of bones. Real bones? Little ones? They're fish bones. And look, there's a hole in the rock. There's a bird's nest. The birds must have caught fish and eaten them and left their bones. Roger! What? I found a pipe. Is that the treasure? No, silly. But if one of the pirates dropped it, maybe the treasure's here. Roger, quick. Help me clear away these rocks. We found it, Roger. The treasure. We found it. We found it. Yeah,
invaders! Man the cutlasses! John! He's whirling two big cushions! John! Get down with the plunderers! Grab him! Disarm him! Ah! I've got his leg! I've got his other leg! Shall I bite it? Oh, no. Amazon's born! Amazon's forever! He's a black-hearted Nancy and fearless peg! Yield! Yeah. Not while my flag flies! No surrender! Hey! Captain Flint, your flag is struck. Hey! Oh, so it is. Quick work, but very hot. I surrender. Flat on the deck, you old sea oh, dog. No. Oh. Ah. Find him. Oh, no mercy. Ah. Hands up for making him walk the plank. Oh. Yes, walk the plank. No, yes. no, heartless bullies. Then walk the plank, you shell. Do you really think he should? Hey, Susan, don't weaken now. It's all part of the game. Uh, Traitor, stand up. Oh, oh, oh. Don't laugh. Uh, oh, oh, then tell that smallest pirate to kindly remove my sun helmet. Roger, take it off. Would you mind putting it on my head? A last wish, you know. My bald head can't stand the sun. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Most merciful. Now, <clears throat> bandage his eyes. Here's a handkerchief. A clean one, I hope. It was clean yesterday. Ow. Now, lead him to the springboard. Oh, mercy! Mercy! I think we ought to give him a chance. Untie his arms and let him swim for us. Oh. Agreed. Prisoner's oh. arms untied. Now, walk, you son of a sea dog. Walk, 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 walk. walk. Ah! Shark! The water's stiff with him! There's one nibbling my foot! I hope he can swim. Don't worry, he's a brilliant swimmer. A rope! A rope! Promise you'll never behave like a native again! Hard hearted pirate, I promise! A rope! Shall we let him have one? He's been in the water a good long time. We'll give you a rope. I'd rather have a rope ladder. Um, at my age, I'm getting too fat for ropes. And there's a rope ladder by the springboard. The bank, I mean. Chuck it over. Coming. <sighs> oh. <sighs> well, that's that. Even Amazons aren't ruthless enough to make a man walk the plank twice in one day. Are all my sins forgiven? If so... After every great sea battle, there's always a big banquet, and there's one waiting for you below. Yay! Captain Flint, we accept your kind invitation. But first, we've got a surprise for you. Well, it's Titty's surprise, really. And Rogers. A surprise, eh? Come and look over the side. It didn't swallow. It, it's my cabin trunk. My book. But how on earth? I can't believe it. It's amazing you found it. Thank you. Thank you. Yay! I shall never forget Captain Flint's face when he saw his cabin trunk again. It was my proudest moment. And when he looked inside, everything was still there. His diaries, the book he was writing, everything. And later that evening, when we were marking our chart with more names of newly discovered places, John and Susan were kind enough to change the name Cormorant Island to Treasure Island. But now it was time for a celebration. We all crowded into the cabin of Captain Flint's houseboat and the big banquet began. Pieces of eight! Pieces of eight! Pretty bully! You're not fit to be a pirate parrot. There are ices, everybody, and they hardly melted at all, so help yourselves. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank thank you. Cream. I don't think you'd better have one after walking the plank. Might get a chill. Oh, by Jove, I suppose I shouldn't. When do you go home? Tomorrow. I wish we lived here like you. Come back next holidays. Hopefully. Ice cream, titty. Thanks. You did walk the plank really well. Oh, uh, practice. Now listen, everybody. I want to say how grateful I am to you all, and especially, of course, to Roger and Tim. Yay! And by the way, the constable told me this morning that following up your lead from the charcoal burners, he has actually caught the villains who ransacked my cabin. Yay! But I never, ever expected to see my cabin trunk again, let alone that wretched book I've been working on all summer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, 
I'd like to show my gratitude in some practical way. Roger, I'm going back to Africa for the winter. Lucky thing, it's school and lessons for us while you junk it about and enjoy yourself in Africa. I, I'm not enjoying myself, Peggy. It's really quite hard work. Anyway, Roger, anything you'd like me to bring you back from Africa? <laughs> With or without a tail? With, please. The other sorts are apes. Oh, well, that's settled. Titty, what about you? Well... I don't think I need to give you a present. No? I think he's already uh, decided to be yours. Uh, Polly? Not really. Really? Well, you've earned it about 10,000 times. Ready, Polly? Thank you so very, very much. He's a young parrot. He'd be better off with a young owner. Maybe you can teach him to say pieces of eight. I'll write and tell you. Write and tell me? You can do better than that. Let's all make a pact to meet again next year and have more adventures. Next year and for all the other years, forever and ever. Where's my squeeze box? Time for a sing-song. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? A lie in the morning. He bought up, she rises. He bought up, she rises. He bought up, she rises. A lie in the morning. Put him in a long bum till he gets sober. Put him in a long bum till he gets sober. Put him in a long bum till he gets sober. The holiday was over. The first of many holidays and adventures we had with the Amazons. The first, and to me, the most special. Later on, I returned to the Lake District with my children, and my children returned with their children. It's still beautiful. They were a good deal more crowded, and with many more cars on the narrow roads, and many more boats on our lake. And everyone has to wear a life jacket these days. I still keep the chart we made. A little faded, but vivid with memories. Oh, and I still keep something else. Yes, she's nearly as ancient as me. Oh, and listen to this. Go on. Pieces of eight. Yes. Took him 30 years to learn that. Silly bird. But he keeps me company. We've grown old together. Two old salts of the sea. One old Amazon and one old swallow. Together still. Swallows and Amazons forever. In episode two of Swallows and Amazons, John was played by John Paul Eakins, Susan Flora Harris, Roger Joe Sauerbutz, Titty Phoebe Phillips, and adult Titty Jean Anderson. Mother and Mrs. Dixon were played by Penny Downey, Peggy Jackie Swainson, Nancy Catherine Poole. Burglar One and the Policeman, Mark Straker. Burglar Two, John Hartley. And Uncle Jim, Nicholas Le Prevot. The music was composed by Nina Humphreys. Clarinet was played by Duncan Prescott. And violin by Sonia Zlani. Swallows and Amazons was directed by Louise Armitage and Catherine Bailey and is a Catherine Bailey Limited production for BBC Radio 4.